After nearly a year of construction and almost a million dollars later, the University of Nebraska-Lincoln Extension is ready to put its new wind tunnels into action. These innovative wind tunnels, located at the West Central Research and Extension Center in North Platte, are designed to measure chemical drift. Market Journal's Curtis Harms has the story. Although this may have once been a hog facility, this University of Nebraska-Lincoln Extension building near North Platte is now full of wind. Throughout the last year, UNL Extension researchers have been building two wind tunnels designed to measure chemical drift, such as pesticides. Greg Kruger is a Western Nebraska cropping system specialist with the University of Nebraska-Lincoln Extension, and he is also leading UNL's wind tunnel project. Kruger says the wind tunnels in North Platte will be testing commercial chemicals. With every application, there's two things that we consider. First is the efficacy, or the, the, how well that product works. But the second part is that off-target movement, and that's the part that impacts everybody. We really don't want to see drift moving away from that intended target. So this research, we can put the two pieces together to really understand how we can maximize the product efficacy while mitigating that off-target movement. One of the wind tunnels is designed to measure ground applications in 0 to 15 mile per hour wind speed conditions. The other system is larger and is designed to measure aerial applications in wind conditions up to 220 miles per hour. Both systems operate the same way and have a fan on one side, which sends the wind evenly down a 50-foot clear tube. Behind the fan is a honeycomb system, which is engineered to send wind evenly through the system. There is also a fan on the end of the tube, which helps pull the air through the tunnel and maintains constant pressure. Near the end of the tunnel, a laser measures droplet size. So most of our work is actually going to be looking at droplet size distribution from spray nozzles, looking at different pressures and looking at different uh, spray solutions. But we'll also be set up to move that sprayer system throughout the wind tunnel, put plants in there and do biological uh, simulations of drift as well. There is only one other wind tunnel facility like this in the United States, which is operated by the USDA and is located in College Station, Texas. Kruger says what makes this facility different from others in the world is its scrubber system at the end of the tunnel, which prevents potentially dangerous chemicals from exhausting back into the air. That scrubber system is uh, set up with uh, uh, what we call a fluted gate, and it, what it is is uh, 12 inches of angle iron set at 15 different angles in there. And because of the wind flow, uh, those droplets fly into uh, that angle iron and they impact. And as that uh, impact builds up, it, it uh, precipitates down to the bottom of the wind tunnel and we can gather it up. Behind the fluted gate, there are a series of filters designed to capture any remaining particulates that may have otherwise entered back into the air. Eventually, Kruger sees this wind tunnel system as a standard that will impact how agricultural chemicals are applied across the nation. I, I, I really envision this uh, being something that uh, has the impact across the entire country. And really, a lot of that impact may not ever be seen by the applicator. But what happens is the, the data that we generate off this will be helped to build the materials that go into building a label for pesticide applications. So while the, the grower may not see the data that we generate here, some of the language in the label regarding drift and efficacy will be from the research that was conducted here in North Platte. Another factor which makes this project unique is the fact that this wind tunnel system is completely indoors, which allows for year-round testing. Reporting for Market Journal, I'm Curtis Harms. Kruger says his team will primarily focus on studying droplet size throughout the next year, but plans to incorporate plants for biological testing as the next step. 